Yo, Elliot, are modern women evil? How to differentiate a good woman when they're all educated to be feminist and murder their babies, for example? I don't think modern women are evil per se, but just like men, misguided. Women are sorely misguided. And I think it stings more with the women because it starts with the women. Evil starts with the women. This is why in the garden, the serpent came to Eve, not Adam. They're more susceptible. Why? Because women are vulnerable. Why? Because their bodies are soft. They're open. They're more open. And so it's so funny because the evil that we're living in right now is a byproduct of Marxist ideological subversion. I know who the enemy is. It's not a matter of, oh, this is just progress. This is a deliberate takedown of the West through Marxist ideological subversion. And the, 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 the orchestrators of this, the creators of this, Antonio Gramsci, Mark Lukacs, so for example, the creators of cultural Marxism, understood that if they were going to take down a culture, they had to begin with the women first. Evil knows that. Evil knows that if you destroy the women, the men are going to follow. If men are virtuous, women are going to follow. So it's just, you know, it's the order, right? Evil, is, it goes this way. Virtue goes this way. For men to be virtue, then vir if men are virtuous, women will come up to virtue, will, will, will follow us in virtue. But where we are right now is women are susceptible to evil and men have fallen down to evil. This is where we are. So we can't blame women. Why? The same way that these fools who try to blame Eve forgot that Adam followed her. Adam's fault. Because Adam is the leader. It was Adam's fault that, first of all, the serpent got in the garden to manipulate his wife, right? Today we call that allowing women to vote. I told you about how diabolical that is, even though people take it for granted. Feminism, right? It, because what, is, what happens when a woman votes? She diverts in her values from her husband's. What does that do? Splits the family. So we let that happen, right? And it was all downhill from there, right? Feminism, right? Now we got all kinds of, you know, confusion, right? The whole LBGT thing comes out of feminism. Believe me. So are women evil? No. They're susceptible to evil and men are weak. Women are more susceptible, more easily susceptible to evil and men are weak. And men have no strength anymore because we have no God and God is our strength. So the minute... Adam and Eve is such a great example of what we see today. Eve didn't have the strength of the father in her. Her strength came from Adam. Eve subverted Adam's authority and followed the serpent. Adam didn't protect his wife from the serpent. Then he rejected the authority of his father from which all his strength comes and followed his wife. Then instead of taking responsibility for it, I want you to hear this because this is you right now. I'm not blaming you, but I don't, this line of thought I'm blaming. Instead of, so when God comes to Adam, he's like, Adam, uh, what happened? Why did you follow your wife? He, he says, he, but it's her fault. He started pointing at her. He said, oh, but the woman, but the woman. He even tried to blame God too. He said, but the woman you gave me. Think about men today. Right now, are women evil? And so you blame in women. And then, because men today have no fathers, they have no God to father, and they're atheists, not even they're worse than atheists. At least atheists are trying to think it through. They're just, they're just meaningless. They're just blah, whatever, addicted to their God is their pleasure, right? I have to acknowledge atheists, the fact that they actually even think. I'm like, I get where you're going because atheism is like a religion. Like, you got to submit to some various tenets of that. There's some, there are various assumptions that you are ascending to to be an atheist so they're thoughtful most men they're not even thinking they're just addicted to their pleasure and so what happens they follow the woman because what does a woman represent to a weak man pleasure so i blame men and i'm happy that i'm a man because i can fix the problem the problem is not about fixing women it's not for evil it's about fixing the woman to drag everybody else down. Evil focuses on the woman. 
Righteousness focuses on the man. I focus on the man. Because when the men are virtuous, the women will have no choice. But it's going to be a lot. I understand I'm fighting an uphill battle. It's going to be long and hard. Why? Because just like Adam said, the, the fathers of the church say this about Adam. He didn't want to be without his wife. That's why he followed her. Men don't want to be without the puss. Oh, they smell so good. Oh, oh, I get to blow my load and ejaculate and orgasm. That's really what you guys are doing when you're following these women. So you're following the women. So here I come with these seemingly alien ideas about don't fornicate because that's how you're, that's what's taking men down the route of evil with women, right? But essentially what I'm doing is taking away your pleasure. I'm saying, no, you got to be strong enough not to be subject to the pleasure of a woman's pussy. But y'all don't want to no, hear that. Men don't want to hear that. Right? Elliot, you're being a boomer. You're taking away our fun. Okay, good. You keep being fun. And keep, just like Vladimir Lenin said. This is Vladimir Lenin too, right? Who's Bolshevik. The degree to which a revolution will be successful, and trust me, we're living under a revolutionary time. Sexual revolution isn't just about sexual freedom. It's about subverting a culture and destroying them. The degree to which women are involved determines the success of a revolution. Your enemies wanted this. And so every time you having sex with these women, simping for these women, being a fornicator, it's turning away from marriage and family, you're letting the enemy win. The enemy knew that was going to happen. They got into our courts. They destroyed family with no fault divorce and stacked the courts against the men. That wasn't a mistake. That was deliberate. And now we don't get married no more, right? Oh, you know what that means? Your enemy won. The enemy won. But here's the thing, we can't play this, we can't win this war from the material aspect. We have to ascend spiritually. This has to, this is, it is a spiritual war. And because men are the spiritual creature, father, pattern, men are the, are, are the ones that are drawn towards spirit. God is our father first to Adam. We got to fight the spiritual fight first. And that's why I'm not against movements like MGTOW. I'm against MGTOW for the wrong reasons, which is just basically, you know, a lot of a lot of these guys are what they call incels, right? Like women don't want them anyway. And or they've had they've had bad experiences with women, so then they have anger towards them, a lot of them, but not all. But I remember this is so this is interesting, right? Rome fell because of decadence. Rome completely fell because of decadence, right? It was and what happens in with decadence? Women are ascendant. Every society, as it collapses, women start taking more prominent roles in the, in the government, right? And that's what happened there. Now we have a vice president who's a really diabolical, deranged woman, right? And she might be our president because they got to get rid of Biden eventually. So the more you see women in government, the closer you are looking to the collapse of that culture. But what happened out of the ashes of the collapse of the Roman Empire was what? The Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire emerged out of the Roman Empire. And maybe we'll have a Holy American Empire. Who knows? But out of the, out of the ashes of the decadent Roman Empire was the Holy Roman Empire. But the Holy, the, but the Holy Roman Empire started to gain momentum through what? Monasteries. Men who became monks. Isn't that fascinating? In order to repair all this, men need to become monks. And I, I often say marriage or monk. That's my, that's my mantra. Marriage or monk. Everything else in between is just dragging us down that crap hole that we find ourselves in right now. So when men go MGTOW for the right reasons, we might see a holy American empire rise. Study that. Look into that. Look into, look into what happened at the, uh, towards the tail end of the Roman Empire. Men started going out into the woods 
and, and living by themselves. They were like, we got to get away from these women because the women destroyed us. And that's, that's what's going to, that's what has to happen. Because we can't fix the problem at the level at which the problem is created. People are going to try to fix this problem by talking to women. <laughs> you ain't going to fix this problem with women. We got to fix this problem ourselves first. And then reintroduce ourselves with, with very, uh, very, how could you say, cautiously, very mindfully reintroduce ourselves to the world of women. So I, you know, this is where I stand with all you guys in this program and anybody who's listening to this. Monk or marriage, those are the only two ways that it's going to work. The society is going to make its way back. And I say monk becomes before marriage. Because marriage won't work until we reestablish the right order of things. And the only way to reestablish the right order of things is to separate ourselves from it completely. Men have to separate themselves. I imagine that there will be, of course, there will be a great collapse, great persecution, but there will be a reignition of the monastic life for men. I sense that strongly. And I and I and I've I have enough confidence in my premonitions these days because I've been right on so many things, and I don't say this out of, in, out of ego, but because I know my thoughts are rightly ordered, that the next phase after collapse, which we might see in our lives, is a return to monasticism, a return to God the Father and men becoming monks. Not out of reactionary, not reactionary, but because that is what's required in order to clean the slate for families to then work again. So it'll be monk and then families again. And if, and if history repeats itself, <laughs> we'll be in this S-hole again sometime in the future. But we got to know where these mistakes were made. Anyway, here we are. So that's it. That's all. That's my opinion on that. Dude, women aren't evil. They're, sed they're seduced by evil. And men are so stupid that we follow them. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind. It has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.